guys, so welcome back to the channel. This week I want to show you a little bit more about my fertilizer spreader and how it works. This particular one has some interchangeable trays in it that you can utilize for not only spraying fertilizer, but spraying sand or salt or some other products if you need to. And so I want to break this down, show you what I think about it, and show you some of the features that it has in it. All right, so this right here, this is an Earthway Even Spread fertilizer spreader, and I've built a sprayer on top of it. This is a three nozzle boom with three T-Jet nozzles. And I did a complete video last week about how to build one of these and some of the things you might want to consider if you want to build one for yourself on any kind of spreader that you might have. So go ahead and check out that video in this tag here sometime if you haven't already, and let me know what you think about building one of those. But today I want to talk about the spreader and show you what these trays will do. So this spreader has some interchangeable trays and I don't think any other spreader out there on the market necessarily has that. And these trays are called a flex tech technology where you can change them out to, for different applications that uh, you're going to try to do. So whether it's fertilizer, sand, salt, um, lime, any of the kind of things you might throw out in a spreader. And so I'm going to show you what these trays can do and show you more about the spreader here. All right, so this one here, this is the Earthway spreader, and I spent a whole lot of time doing research and comparison between the Spiker, the Lesco, and the Earthway. And the only reason I ended up with this one is it has some interchangeable trays in it where you have your normal tray that opens up for spring fertilizer, but it also has another tray that I think's more designed to spread like salt in the winter time, but it's got these teeth in it that'll uh, actuate back and forth. And I bought that intentionally to do some top dressing with it because out here in West Texas, the only type of sand that we can get is masonry sand. But it's a lot different than I think what most of you guys have across the US. Our masonry sand still has a bunch of rocks in it. And it also, when it's kind of wet, it sticks real bad and it won't flow through a spreader, even a drop spreader that's got the teeth in the bottom of it to kind of keep things moving it'll still just plug up. And so I bought this one for that tray so that way it's constantly has this agitation motion going on in it and it'll keep an even spread on sand. So it allows me to spread sand a little bit easier than having to sling it around with a shovel and you know, just doing a lot of extra work that I used to have to do. So this one's okay. I like that, the things I do like about this is it can hold a ton of material. You can see how big this hopper is. And this is the professional line. This is the one that you would compare to the, the big spiker or the Lesco that's real popular. And so I like that it can hold a lot of material. I can put a lot of stuff down really quick. And I'll tell you one thing is if you're looking for a fertilizer spreader, get one with some big uh, rubber, they call it pneumatic tires on it. It makes a world of difference over those plastic ones. It is a lot easier to push when you got a lot of weight in it. It's a whole lot easier to uh, get across the ground because it handles the bumps a lot easier than the plastic wheels do. And it just makes everything so much smoother to deal with, you know. And it doesn't matter if you buy one of these, you know, Lesco or Spiker, or if you end up with something out of like Tractor Supply or something like that. Because I've had one from Tractor Supply before, and it's still in comparison still really good. It just doesn't have as much uh, adjustments in it as some of these name brands do, but they do really well. They're a whole lot better than the Scott's, you know, drop spreaders or the little cheesy Scott's uh, plastic ones that they have at the box stores. Those things just don't last. They're not enjoyable. They're top heavy. They'll tip over on you because they're just not designed well. So this one's been pretty good for that. And so my biggest complaint about this spreader, and it's with every Earthway spreader. So if it wasn't for those trays, I would never have bought an Earthway spreader. And the reason why I would never buy one of these is they are all plastic, even the professional line. That gearbox down there is plastic. And it's ridiculous because these things can spread salt and sand with these interchangeable trays they sell but that stuff gets down in these gear boxes and grinds and, and everything that's inside of this uh, axle, there's no bearings or anything. It's just plastic bushings, plastic sleeves. So eventually all that stuff's gonna wear out and to replace those parts on their website, they're expensive. You know, they're marked up really high. 
So when this thing comes to an end, I think I'll be getting something else. So I would, I would not recommend Earthway, although for their, I don't know, midline that uh, a lot of the guys advertise that they would recommend, it's definitely a step up from the Scots version, believe me. Earthway is not a bad way to go, but if you're looking for longevity and if you're gonna be spraying a lot of heavy material in a big hopper like this, I would not buy one of these at all because of all the plastic parts that's inside of here and, and it's just gonna wear out eventually. All right, so as far as the spreader goes, it's just like any other spreader. You've got your agitator pin in there. This thing opens up to whatever desired setting that you have and the material falls through. But what's unique about this one is, like I mentioned, it has these uh, interchangeable trays here. And so what you do is you take this pin out, you unlock these little plastic tabs and take apart another little plastic clip back here. And then this tray can come out. So that's all there is to it. It's just a plastic tray. It comes out of there, material goes through, hits the wheel, and it throws it out everywhere. But what I was interested in was this blue tray here. And so the way it works is you've got this little pin that goes over your spindle like that. And you drop this little tray in here. Lock that in like that. Hook up the spindle down, or not the spindle, but the adjustment rod down here. So, what's unique is watch these teeth right here when I move this back and forth. You see how they move back and forth? So, while I've got that sand sitting in here, I can open this up. The sand rides in down here like this, and then these teeth move back and forth so it's constantly moving like a comb it's moving against that sand and that's how it keeps it flowing and moving I still have to shake the spreader a little bit to get the weight for the sand to kind of fall in when it's kind of wet but that's that helps keep things moving by that moving back and forth like that and it's not perfect but it works a whole lot better than it ever did trying to do that in a drop spreader or any other kind of spreader that I've done before that had drop holes like this because the sand will stick and doesn't fall through there very easy. So that's what was cool about that. It's got that wide opening and the teeth can move back and forth on that. So my biggest gripe about this tray is, let me pull this back out of here and show you some of the parts. So I showed you this little piece right here that goes on. So what that is, is an offset center hole. So as this rotates, it rides against this piece here. And that's what creates that back and forth motion on those pins. So what you have is plastic against plastic. And you can already see that it has started to wear in to that little piece right there. And so you got plastic on plastic it causes a whole lot of heat. You're moving a lot of material in these big hoppers. So why in the world do they build this stuff out of plastic? It just drives me crazy. Because let me tell you something, I spent $300 on this whole setup. I think it was $150 for just your standard setup of the professional, you know, professional hopper with the drop spread tray in it. And I think this special tray here was 150 bucks. And there is nothing special about it other than it's plastic. And that little piece causes that agitation, but it's gonna wear out on me. It's just a matter of time. So if I were to spend $300 again, I'd, like I said before, I'd buy the Lesco or the Spiker because it's just not worth all this plastic material.
So really, that's all there is to it. There's nothing that fancy about, about it other than it, it's, it's a big hopper. It can spread a whole lot of material. And like I said, those interchangeable trays are called Flex Tech. I think it's the model or version they refer to on their website about that stuff. But that tray is pretty neat that it can spread the sand. It's, it has helped a lot with the bent grass back here in the back but it's still just kind of a pain doing top dressing for me because I don't have a whole lot of land and so I don't have little four wheelers or a riding lawnmower or anything like that to haul the sand around and dump it out. So I've still got to do a lot of that work by hand manually. So I like that spreader tray for the bent grass because it gives me an even spread kind of like they do when you see them aerate and top dress a putting green. They've got that gigantic spreader that just spreads that sand real quick and evenly. That's kind of the idea I was going for. And uh, that's what I do with uh, some sand after I screen out all the rocks. I'll put in that blue tray and go over there to the putting green and it blasts all that sand out real nice and quick and even. And so it, the tray does a really good job. This whole thing does a really good job. It's just my complaint is it's all plastic and for that amount of money and the amount of weight it's rated for and all the things it can do. I just can't believe that all the main components are all plastic sleeves, plastic bushings, plastic parts. That's my only complaint about this whole thing, but don't get me wrong, an Earthway spreader is definitely a good one. It's a good option. Um, I've, I would, if I remember correctly, I think the Earthway is kind of the next step in terms of affordability for getting a really nice spreader for a homeowner. And so definitely check them out, you know, unless you're willing to make that big jump to a Lesco or a Spiker, which, you know, most of you guys probably don't even need something that high end because you may not have a yard that large. So, or you're not as crazy as I am and spend $300 on one of these, but, you know, check it out. You may find that you like it. Like I said, get one that's got rubber tires on it, not the plastic ones. The rubber tires makes a huge difference. I know that just sounds crazy, but it's easier to push. It rides better. It's just a more pleasant experience. Just like when you finally get yourself a really nice lawnmower, the difference from it, from what you had before, you can tell a difference. It's the same kind of feeling. You know, it's just everything is a lot better when you've got these rubber tires. All right, so that's gonna do it for my fertilizer spreader. Hopefully that gave you a little more insight on how this thing works and maybe a little more insight on Earthway's product line. You know, if you're looking to upgrade your lawn game, you might want to consider Earthway. They've got a, a decent uh, homeowner, like mid-level line, where you can pick up a decent spreader for maybe $150 on maybe Amazon, or you might have to get it from a hardware store. But just make sure that if you're looking at that homeowner uh, mid-line, that it's got the rubber wheels. They've got a lot of models that have plastic wheels on it. And in my opinion, the plastic wheels just really isn't much better than any of the Scotts products. You know, a lot of the Scotts products you get at Home Depot or Lowe's are just junk. But, you know, sometimes you need a drop spreader. I've still got my Scotts drop spreader that I still use from time to time when I need to drop something, you know, in a little more precise manner instead of just throwing everything out. So I realize there's times for, for those different applications that you need, things like that. But if you're looking to upgrade your lawn game, definitely check out Earthway. If you're a professional, I would stay clear of Earthway because if you're a professional or you've got a large lawn, you need something with some more metal parts in it than anything you're going to get out of Earthway. So definitely check out Lesco or um, Spiker and make sure you get yourself a good quality uh, spreader if you're going to be doing a lot of material like that. And so anyway guys, I hope that gave you a little more insight on uh, Earthway and their products and may help you make a little better decision moving forward. And so I think it's going to do it for this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one.